Kadani Group shares wreaked havoc on Dalal Street today, putting the rug from under the benchmarks. Uh, the Sensex was down 874 points after falling around 1,100 points during the session, and the Nifty closed down close to 300 points. Only eight of the uh, Sensex 30 saw some green today. Leading the sentiment and the fall were the Adani Group counters, which lost a whopping 4 lakh crore rupees in market value in the past two sessions. Today, six of the Adani Group shares, Wilmar, Power, Green Energy, Transmission, Total Gas and NDTV fell to their lower circuits of 5 and 20 percent. Ambaja Cements, ACC and Adani Ports were down around 15 percent. Even Adani Enterprises, which has come out with India's largest follow-on share sale of 20,000 crore rupees, saw its shares fall 18.5 percent. As of 4 p.m., the FPO was subscribed just 1 percent. This comes even as reports emerged of market regulator SEBI increasing scrutiny of deals by the group during the past year and that capital market regulator would also study the report by Hindenburg Research. Devin Chokhsi joining us uh, live on the story. Devin, you know, whatever we might say, it's clearly been the Adani group stocks and the upcoming FPO that have just been shaking up the market and investor sentiment. What would you attribute this to? Is it sheer nervousness or do you find genuine cases to question, uh, you know, some of what has been uh, brought up in the Hindenburg report? Yeah, well, I think uh, uh, um, one important point I think which I would like to highlight here uh, this particular short selling which has happened, which has happened outside the market, which means I think this uh, instrument which was created was I think created outside Indian market and I think by creating a separate derivative uh, instrument. Now this is quite scary. I think today it, this, this instrument has actually worked against a particular group of stocks. Tomorrow such kind of opaque instruments uh, where the transactions are not reported in Indian market could possibly create havoc in any kind of market, any kind of stocks, which could possibly quite, would be quite detrimental to the overall interest of the market and their investors. While the derivatives are accepted way of, I think, generating liquidity, it should not happen that the derivative becomes the instrument of mass destructions. I guess I think this is one important point which has possibly forgotten while allowing the derivative speculation into the market without any kind of a control or a check. I think today this particular situation has uh, opened up the alarming uh, bells as far as uh, the, I think, the rampant use of derivative by creating the wealth destruction, in, uh, for, for, for creating the wealth destruction. This is the only point which I would like to drive at this point of time. I must repeat and say that I am not against the derivative market. I am not against the liquidity that it creates in the market. However, I think any instrument so created which is outside the purview of the regulator of India and operates from the country where I think it is not governed, probably I think that needs to be checked and checked thoroughly before I think it is being allowed for trading from anywhere in the world. Today we do not know what is the quantum of shorting that uh, Edinburgh has done. We have no idea about that. We also do not have any idea about I think what kind of instrument it is where the shorting has taken place. If uh, on one side all the other Indian investors are required to disclose their trade, why a part of investors, I think, who have operated the market from any corner are not allowed, are not asked to disclose their trade, is a very very important point. And that trade, I think, after uh, concluding, I think, should not be disclosed. Devin, I think it should be done on the market platform. Sure, Devan, we're a little little short on time, but just a quick answer from you: What's going to happen to this FPO, Devan, and the timing of this report? Uh, just ahead of this 20,000 crore uh, FPO, the fact that we've only seen 1% come in so far. I mean, is this going to spell, uh, uh, you know, a really bad sign for Adani? Or do you see them, you know, coming back from this? Because we've seen a massive rout on the exchange. Well, I think fortunately the anchor investor issue is fully subscribed. Mm. In fact, oversubscribed. And I think currently, if at all, uh, Adani Group has to basically bring down the price. Basically. Because the current market price is lower compared to the lower band of the FPO price. It would be somewhere around 20 to 110 because 10 percent reduction in the price is possible in a situation where I think the price does not hold at the level at which it was announced. Got it. Should that happen, then I think at around 20 to 110, I think this issue can go through. That is what my belief is. However, I think it would be hurry on my side, I think, to conclude that part of it. Let us get, I think, more amount of clarity about, I think, fundamental okay. questions which I asked earlier. All right, Devin. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank we'll you. take forward that.
uh, discussion later, but clearly it's all about price and of course a lot of heated uh, arguments and reactions coming in on the Hindenburg report.